Dig Air now. Welcome back to the workshop. Hatery just hit 4K and we're doing a giveaway. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Alright, so uh, yeah, we hit 4K. Really exciting. So uh, wait until the very end of this video and we'll tell you exactly how to enter and how to get involved in the giveaway. But today, as in the title, we are looking at how synchro mesh gears actually work. The reason I came up with this was um, I've been watching a few videos recently of different people stripping gearboxes, not just mini gearboxes, but other gearboxes in general, and trying to explain synchro mesh kind of a little bit. Some people doing a good job, some people getting some of it in there, and I said, you know what, let's just take five minutes, take some gears down off the shelf, and actually do a run through of how exactly a synchro mesh gear works. Synchro mesh was brought in a uh, sort of just shortly after the uh, major production run of minis got going and it was i suppose um pivotal in the way gear changes would happen some people might say that prior to synchro mesh we had dog engagement and i suppose that in a sense is correct but dog engagement um, that we know of today would be associated with a series would be gearbox for racing and it would be gear kits for racing and those type of dog engagement gearboxes are made for two reasons one very fast changing of gear ratios because there's no little ball bearings to go springing everywhere and secondly a very robust fast gear change that can take pretty much being dogged as we'd say in here in Ireland which is actually just kind of getting the two gears and ramming them together which kind of is really brutal on um synchro mesh gears whereas it's not nearly as hard on something like a dog engagement because the teeth are so big anyway let's get into looking at uh, synchro mesh and then we can talk more as we're going along why it was so pivotal so if we start off with a lay shaft a main shaft out of a gearbox this is actually the third motion shaft in uh, an a series or mini gearbox you would have a primary in input shaft here. You then would have the lay shaft running across this side. And then you've got the uh, output here, which is going to the, the pinion gears on this sort of machine spline here and is driving the uh, crown wheel on the differential. So what's happening? Basically, you can see we have a machine surface here. So the pinion is spinning here. It's adding drive to the lay shaft. The lay shaft then is adding drive to a gear that's spinning here. And what we want to happen is we want this gear that's spinning free to join onto this shaft and turn it to bring it together. And that's gearboxes 101. You've got power coming in into a lay shaft from the lay shaft into this gear. And then you need to make it one with this third motion so it drives the car. The brutalist way you could do this is dog engagement, which is basically where you have some sort of teeth on the gear and you've got something sliding here on the side of the gearbox that's going to join this to this in a sort of dogs joining together. In the very early creations of gearboxes, what they actually did was they had straight cut gears and they actually just slid the gear along the shaft until it engaged with the uh, lay gear so you would actually slide the third motion gear into mesh and it would join into the teeth of the other one and it would be pretty brutal but it would work and you could change gears it was very evident very early on that the problem would be that the wheels would be spinning at one speed which would be turning this shaft at another speed and the engine itself would be going at another speed now, we could deal with one of those. We could have a clutch which would disengage the engine and would stop all these gears. But this gear would still be spinning because it would be driven by the, well, this shaft, should I say, would be being driven by the wheels. So, what you had to do was you actually had to let the clutch off, rev up the engine to spin up these other gears and try and match the speed of the output of the wheels with the gear really complicated and took huge amounts of practice. A very clever individual came up then with synchro mesh. And the idea with synchro mesh was that you would actually build a clutch into the gear itself. The idea there is, is that 
if you disengage the engine you've got drive coming from the wheels and you can use a clutch between the wheel side and the gear you want to match the speed of in other words the wheels actually bring the speed of the gearbox up as opposed to the engine bringing the speed of the gears of the gearbox up i'm going to show you exactly how that works there's three major parts to any synchro mesh. You've got what's called the synchro hub. And the synchro hub is a piece that has to slide. So if we look at our output shaft, we can see we have splines around here. And our synchro hub can fit into those splines. Okay, so there's the synchro hub and it's sitting in those splines. But there's nothing to join that synchro hub to that gear. If I press that synchro hub up there, it's not joining that. That synchro hub is joined to that shaft. As I try and turn it, it's turning that output. So what we do is we put a clutch in there. We put a cone clutch, which we call a um, balk ring in, in sort of engine and gearbox terms. So what you can see is, is that has a taper inside it. And that taper matches the taper on the gear. So as those two tapers come together, they become stuck to each other. And that's pretty much how clutches work. So if you press this up against this, it's going to get stuck to it. What we can do then is we can bring in our synchro hub. And as you can see, our synchro hub has sort of three big cutouts in it. And those three cutouts line up with the ears of the synchro hub. So what we can then have is we can have that synchro hub sliding. And when we engage our gear lever, we first of all slide that synchro hub like that forward. So it goes from being there and it slides forward like that and pushes that balk ring up onto the cone clutch of the gear we want to engage. What's now happened, you can see, is I have a driving force there. That uh, synchro hub or that balk ring is now wedged. And what happens is, as it tries to turn, it's now turning the two of these together, okay? Now there can still be some slip, but it's very little now, we've reduced it. So what happens? The wheels are spinning, we disengage one gear, so more than likely our sinker hub is gonna be that way in first gear, and then we try and engage second. But just before second slides in, it pushes that synchro hub up there onto that cone and brings those two together. There's one more element to this, but just before I do that, we're gonna do a bit of a sneaky one. For all those people that fast forward right to the very end of this video, they're not gonna know about this. If you want to enter the giveaway, what you need to do is you need, when you're making comments down below, you need to bang that like button for us. And when you make the comment down below, hit gear me up HRE. So type in there, gear me up HRE. Make your comment, have a chat about what we're talking about, but somewhere in your comment, just stick in there, gear me up HRE we're going to put you into the draw which we're going to pull out in next week's video all right and then we'll put you in there we'll contact you when we make the draw we'll get your information and we will uh, send you out a t-shirt we're going to give away two t-shirts so the top two people uh, that come out not the top two commenters or anything like that but two people are going to get taken out by the draw randomly and we're going to send you guys a t-shirt of your choice in your size and we'll get it straight out to you and we'll draw that in next week's video right back onto this and we'll fool them all at the very end ha 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 <laughs> he says with evil laughter okay so what we now have is we have the differential driving the third motion shaft we've slid across our um synchro hub which has drove our balk ring up onto the taper and it's trying to make that synchro hub and that gear one which is accelerating all the other gear train this side. We have our foot down on the clutch, so the flywheel is spinning free, the clutch plate is spinning free, free, and the drop gears are spinning free. So what happens is, as this comes forward, it starts to drive that gear in reverse, brings all the rest of the gearbox up to speed, and the last element can come into play, which is going to be the selector or the outside um, selector hub. That hub has inside it those same cutouts that we talked about that are in the synchro hub itself. And it also has a bunch of dog teeth. So 
those ones going around there but he's going to give you a bit of a close-up you're going to get a focus on that all right focus you fat uh, gets that in there and what happens is we've got teeth as you can see here all the way around that gear so what's going to happen is the synchro hub is going to push the box ring in it's going to bring all the gears in the box up to speed and it's going to allow this to literally engage inside there a little bit of slip can happen in that um dog ring and if you get slip in that dog ring what that will allow this is uh, one of those early gearboxes and these uh, um, bulk rings are absolutely phenomenal. If you can get these old early bulk rings and those early gears, they hold so well there, I'm not able to turn them by hand. But you know, in the case where you've got an engine in the gearbox, they'll turn no problem. So what happens is Paul fumbles around here for about five minutes. He's trying to get a bit of length out of this video. You know? I want to finish it all up in a minute if you'll give it out they're too short i'm joking okay so we have it all together so what happens is the uh, synchro inner goes in drives that bulk ring up the gears match speed and then what happens is the dog teeth can come together to us what that gives us is what feels like a completely seamless gear change seamless gear change genie mac i need to get my own teeth back these ones are, are fighting me hard tonight all right so let's look at that just one more time so we can see the whole thing in detail. Let's put, do an exploded view. Let's bring that back out again. So what have we got? We've got our bark ring and our bark ring is a clutch that is spinning freely on the gear we want to speed match. That gear currently is spinning free of that shaft. So the shaft is stopped and the gear is spinning free. When we want to engage that gear, what we have is our synchro hub inner which is splined to the main shaft. If I try and turn that, the output shaft is turning, this gear is spinning free. It comes in and it joins that loose bark ring to the gear we want to speed match. The two of those then get driven by the output shaft to bring up the speed, and that then will allow our uh, um, gear selector outer to get its dog teeth to engage and then off we go, we have drive. We've now connected the lay shaft to the primary and to the output shaft and the output toward motion and the gears drive and it turns. There's one last thing that goes on in a synchro mesh and that is what we call the detent. And you can see there's a hole drilled in here. Inside that will be a spring and a ball bearing and it is matching up with a groove that is inside here. I'm giving Billy the hardest day of filament butcher anyway. Uh, what you'll see is there's a groove machined all the way around the inside of this gear. And that groove is designed so that when we go to try and select gear, the ball bearing has to come up and over and out of that gear. And that gives you that detent sensation, that kind of locking into gear, coming out of gear, locking into the next gear. And it keeps that whole shaft together. Technically speaking, actually what keeps them together once gear is selected is not that detent. It is a small amount of angle that is ground into the dog teeth. And that angle basically makes them want to drive together as opposed to slipping out. That would also be in a dog engagement gear kit. And uh, before we finish up the video, I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who made us or got us to 4K. It's absolutely mind blowing to me. I know I always say this every time we hit a milestone of another thousand subscribers, but we started this channel just over a year ago and I am absolutely chuffed to see us grow so quickly. We grow like this because of all of your support. If you're new to the channel, you are most welcome. We are generating here a phenomenal community. We've got people in the States, we've got people in Australia, we've got people all over the world, England, Ireland, you name it. Those people send work to me, communicate with me. It is phenomenal and I really do thank everybody who tunes into the videos. We are starting to build a community of knowledge around engineering, around classic cars, about classic motoring, and also a lovely community where I love to come and share information with you guys and get in there. As I said, I wanted to support that with the giveaway. By the way, if you just fast forward to the end of the video, 
yeah, I missed it. You may go back to the middle and figure out how to get into this giveaway. Go on, learn all about synchros and hear what we have to say and how to enter. I'm only, I'm only joking. I know from your viewership, you guys watch all my videos every single minute of it, no doubt. That's why it says most people watch 25%. I'm only joking. I'm going to laugh at you. Anyway, look guys, it's a bit of a short one today. I just wanted to get some information out about synchro mesh gears and how they work. If you have any more questions about gearboxes and you want me to answer those, bash them into the comment section below. Love looking at technical stuff like this and answering it and talking about it in the comment section below. For those that joined the live stream, by the way, the last time, I um, hope you've enjoyed that. I know the quality of the video wasn't great. We're struggling with internet here, unfortunately. We're doing everything we can to try and get better internet here. I absolutely had a great day doing live stream with you, and I hope to make that a regular feature on this channel this year, doing those live streams and hanging out with people in the workshop. It was really good fun, and it was great to see all those regular names of people I see from the comments coming and hanging out. Um, I think there was a good bit of feedback where people said they would like to move it to the Sunday. Billy said we should have done it on Sunday. I should have listened. Hey, what does the director of a channel know? I know everything. <laughs> so look, the truth is um, we'll probably move those to a Sunday. We have a live coming up very soon with Cole. Um, we just, I think that's actually set, is it Bill? I think it is. Yeah, I think it's in our, uh, if you go and check out the live section, I'm pretty sure Cole scheduled it the other day. So that's all done and dusted and ready to go. So you can hit there and get a reminder when that video is coming out. We've some real interesting stuff. Me and Cole have a big collab coming up on another uh, project that Cole is involved in. And we'll probably talk a bit about that in the live stream. So, um, you know, set a reminder for that and tune in and see us at the end of the month when we do that live stream. Other than that, I suppose there's not much more for me to say. Other than I'm going to see you guys on the next one.